Hello and welcome to the Cambridge Science Festival 2021. We would like to take you on a journey to a safer and more inclusive urban environment. So please join us to discuss the collaborative development of panoramic holographic projections creating augmented reality. Augmented reality is multifaceted, ranging from medical applications to entertainment to mapping. But we would like to focus on the transportation in the interactive urban environment, the so-called smart cities. We provide personalized and individual projections for a safer transportation journey. When looking at the current state of head-up displays, we have to bear in mind their purpose. The driver should not get distracted while driving and the driver should not move his field of view from the road towards a small part of the windshield or a display. Our technology projects the information directly into the driver's eyes so that the holographic objects align with the real road objects, creating augmented reality. To achieve a comfortable and safe level of augmented reality, we elaborated an ultra-high-definition holographic optical setup and we used LIDAR, which stands for Light Detection and Ranging, as a basis for our holographic images. We chose Mallet Street in London, which is a crowded street located between the Senate House and UCL Engineering, as you can see here, for our holographic 3D panoramic images. Our fellow collaborator, Phil, We'll explain more of how the LiDAR data was collected from Mallet Street and why we chose LiDAR. Thanks, Jana. My name's Phil Wilkes. I'm from University College London and the National Centre for Earth's Observation. So this particular technique we use LiDAR is an active remote sensing technique. So it sends out a laser pulse to measure the distance between the scanner and an intercepting object. This particular technique we use is called terrestrial laser scanning. So it scans a panorama, sending out many millions of laser pulses and builds up a 3D model of its location. Here at UCL, we've been developing techniques using this terrestrial laser scanner to estimate forest structure, in particular in the tropics. But more recently, we've moved to urban areas as this scene, as this scene here at uh, Mallet Street. So this particular scene was captured from 25 positions along the street. And then we've stitched them together to make one long scene. Uh, this particular video is coloured by reflectance intensity, so brighter objects appear brighter in the uh, more colourful in the image. And as you can see, we don't just capture the trees in these in this scanner; we capture all the street scene. So this is ideal for Yana's application. The data captured here is very information rich, so it doesn't only characterise the trees, which we're interested in, but also includes cars, people, trucks, etc. Although the data we captured was from a stationary platform, it's analogous to the sensors that will be on the next generation of vehicles. So although our project intention was to characterise street trees, uh, the data here can be used for Yana's project and it's been a great collaboration. As we now know how the LiDAR data was collected, we can proceed to the processing stage. On the right, we can see a snapshot of the bird's view of Mallet Street. The Senate House being on the right, and on the left, UCL Engineering would start, also indicated on the map. On the left, we can see the results of the processed data into point clouds with an accuracy to up to a million points. The reason why we decided to implement point clouds as processed data is the connectivity with the interactive urban environment so that traffic accidents or any objects on the road could be passed on to the driver and projected holographically in real time. After the point cloud conversion process, the holographic image generation starts. We have an object extracted from the collected LiDAR data and processed into point clouds. Afterwards, we digitally inverse Fourier transform this object and receive the hologram. This process takes about a quarter of a second. We take the hologram and implement it in our optical setup to receive the replay field. This is the result the driver will see in his field of view. The replay field would reach a maximum of 9 times 9 centimeters. 
Here we have the optical system used in this experiment. In the top left, this is a schematic of the optical system. In the top right, we have the different components involved. And in the bottom left, we have the system in operation. We used different lenses and experimented with convex and concave lenses to see how the eye box of the driver, meaning the field of view, will expand by using different lenses. To achieve a personalized head-up display, different human-machine interaction studies were analyzed. Information was sorted by relevance and projected into the driver's field of view. To achieve this, the setup was recalibrated according to these optical studies, and different lenses and algorithms were used to project different types of objects into the driver's field of view. On the right, we can see the technology in operation, where the hologram is projected as a 3D image directly into our eyes as a floating image. When we take 3D cut images and project them holographically, we can align them with real life objects, such as the Land Rover, Range Rover, Villar in the background. Our results show panoramic holographic projections as an addition to the real world environment. They act to alert the driver, but not as a distraction due to the personalized structure of the head-up display, due to different sizes, different distances, and the layered architecture to act as an augmented reality experience. In future research, we would like to add more layers in our system so that we are able to project different types of objects at different distances. We would also like to expand our data sets and test them in different environments to finally be able to personalize our solutions of head-up displays with augmented reality. Thank you very much for joining us on this journey. If you have any questions regarding our research or you would like to discuss it, please do reach out. If you have any questions regarding our CBT or research at the Center for Molecular Materials, Photonics and Electronics with Professor Tim Wilkinson, I would be happy to discuss it with you. Thank you very much. Stay safe and positive and enjoy your time at the Cambridge Science Festival 2021.